what you want now. All Try right. to answer whatever you got. Okay. Oops. I'll make sure I'm still. Gotcha. All right. Um, how did football start and how? In 34 or 35? How did, how did y'all, how did it come about? Oh, in uh, spring, spring of 35, uh, when we got our suits. Oh, I don't, I don't know, know the details of the, you know, uh, about getting the football. All I remember is in, in uh, early spring of 35, while well, we got uh, our football suit and worked out so much spring, we got a little work out that spring yeah. and kind of got our team organized a little bit and got our suits and stuff like that. Um. Do you know how the name Bulldogs came about? Were you called the Bulldogs back then? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, it, it wasn't a, a no big deal about Bulldogs then like this. You know, it wasn't a real mascot, really? at least. I don't remember too much about it. Were you, mean how. were you black and white as far uh, as uniform? Right, we were black and white, uh-huh. Um, what does what the Bulldog Stadium look like back then? <laughs> it's a Johnson Grant pasture. <laughs> yeah, by the railroad track, north of the G and that, uh, north end of hell. But where it is now, only we didn't have the facility. Uh, Johnson Grant patch had been mowed down. They got their all it amounted to was a goal post on each end of the thing. That was moved on the stadium. <laughs> How'd they mark the field? Uh, they used chalk. It's uh, like, I guess they still do. Uh, now they just had yeah. uh, chalk there. there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What were the, you said you got the uniforms. What were they like when you got them? Oh, we had the high top shoes and uh, basically the same pants with the padding that they, that they have now in the, in the jersey with the shoulder pads. But uh, the helmets were leather helmets. No face guard, just a strap under the chin and that's all the, the helmet meant. Well, up in the Top of the helmet, there's a little uh, some straps went across there, kind of like they do on some of these uh, hats they're wearing now. These uh, steel hats, you know, they're kind of little. But it was just leather, uh, leather helmets all amounted to, or just a leather, kind of like <laughs> kind of like a heavy hitter cap. <laughs> um. Describe uh, Barnes Milo. Oh, he's a great big guy. I mean, he was so at least two fifty and probably six six, I'd imagine. And he'd been seven feet tall. If it wasn't for his feet, about half of it turned down for feet. They called him Foots. He wore by the number. Oh. Fourteen or something. She, he, he did great long feet about that long. I'm still got scars of them <laughs> from, from, the, from his feet. You know, he, he'd get us down in there. Any of the players would get us down in position. You know, he's going to. And when they'd hike the ball, he, he'd kick you right in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> And he'd get out there and he he wore a, a suit too when he worked out. I mean, you know, like pads and stuff. He did have a pair of pants on his the shoes, and uh, he'd get out and show what what he wanted done. And then you go down and well, when they uh, hike the ball or whatever, why he like take his old foot sideways, give you give you a boost, <laughs> but. Uh, what about uh, the next coach, L.B. Morris? Well, he was a 
he was the old oh, 150 pound, you know, nice kind of a guy. He had played the, uh, football in North Texas and uh, oh, he wasn't no star or nothing when he played football. He's kind of like I was, he's kind of second stringer on the college football team over there, but he was a, a real gentleman. I mean, he, he was, you know, he just, uh, he was just down to earth sort of, sort of guy. And, uh, He, he was strict in his, uh, what he wanted done. I mean, he, 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 wanted, he wanted it done, but he was nice about it. What about the uh, the first game that y'all played? Uh, what you said that? Uh, it was in Tahoe or something? Oh yeah, we went to Tahoe on the little flatbed truck I think I told about. Uh, and playing at Tauga was the uh, kind of water they had at Tauga. We thought we'd better carry on water because they had that mineral water over there in Tauga and, and we didn't want to get over there and have a problem with the, with the water. And, and so we carried a can of water with us on an old flatbed truck. And we got over there and well, I remember one of the boys, uh, right tackle, I believe, we call him Duke Knox, he's a James Alvis. Uh, he'd never seen a football game. He played in the foot, first football game he ever seen. And played 60 minutes. Uh, back then, we didn't uh, substitute like we do now. We just, uh, uh, if you started the game, I think he'd come out once in the quarter and go back in, but he had to come out again, that was all of it. So there wasn't no substitution. That was the reason I didn't get to play much. <laughs> because I, I played in Bill Cloud's position, I was his substitute, and as a result, uh, they wouldn't take Bill out until the game was kind of secure, and then I'd get to play some. But uh, we played over there, and I think we lost that first game. I'm not sure, but I believe we lost that first game. But it was it was a experience for all of us. To, and um, what about uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Bill Clay? Well, he was a he was just ordinarily nice kind of a guy. About the old 140, I guess. When I first come to how I thought, uh, it's, it's, of course, they, everybody knew Bill Cloud down here, and I was a sophomore in high school when I come to how And, of course, some of the boys uh, wanted to know about, you know, what I could run or what I could do, you know, sports-wise, and I said, I'm just about to pass the thing that are, you know, I thought. And they began to tell me how fast Bill Cloud was, and, he was kind of short and chunky, and his leg wasn't too long, but he was big. And I said, oh, I didn't have to run a big cloud. But uh, spring come, and uh, 35, I found out how fast Bill Cloud, I found out how fast Bill Cloud was when track uh, started. And he was, he was fast. I, he didn't seem that fast, but he could just kind of, he kind of glided when he ran. And besides a hundred, he run a hundred and two twenty. And he had a the longest two twenty stride I believe I ever seen. He, he was just he, he was just way out there. And he had to, but. Uh, I found out that Bill Cloud was the fastest guy that ever been around. Um, what about on the football field? Well, he was, besides being fast, he was, he was a pretty shifty runner. Uh, 
I've seen no, I don't know how many times in the two years that we played football, he was in that same class and we played in the uh, fall of 35 and in the fall of 36, two seasons we played. And I've seen him, I don't know how many times, uh, take the kick off and make a touchdown with it. And he, uh, I remember one time coach caught him out after curfew and that before the game, the next day before the game started, when he, uh, he uh, got his starting lineup, he didn't he didn't call Bill Cloud's name, and Bill Cloud started everything, but he didn't start that game, and uh, maybe Collinsville was playing, I don't remember, but anyway. The first half we didn't do too good, and coach just uh, that was L.B. Morris when he's coaching, and he just kind of ignored Bill for the first half, and I think it was seven nothing behind at the half, and so when the second half started, why the coach asked Bill, said, "You ready to play ball, Bill?" He said, "Yes, sir, coach," and so. They lined up and they kicked off to us the uh, second half and uh, Bill made a touchdown on the kickoff. And he was just that he was that type of guy. I mean he could, uh, he played halfback the first year and then a quarterback the second year. And you might mention that the quarterback called his own plays. It wasn't the, uh, when he got out there on the field, oh he, the coach might can signals some kind of play, but mainly the the quarterback calls the one plays whatever he thought was uh, the nick. It, it was. I've thought ever since that the quarterback ought to be the one to call the plays. <laughs> He's been professional now, but uh, back then the quarterback called the plays. Uh, going into the 36th season, did anybody really give you a chance to win district? Oh, I don't know what you mean by giving it a chance. Well, I mean, did the other teams really look at you seriously as far as you being a good team? Oh, well, I think so because we kind of established ourselves that first year, even though we didn't win district. And it, most of us had never seen a football game or a whole whole game and knew nothing about the game. It was all new to us. But in that first year, I think we we, we won enough games to establish ourselves enough that, that by that second year, when the season started, I think that, that the rest of the teams in the conference uh, realized that we was a team to contend with. Because they, uh, some of them dreaded to see how it coming. That's good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tauga was there. Actually, they beat us the first game. Well, we used to we kind of like pick on Tauga and Tom Bain. Of course, Tom Bain was our fucking boy. Uh, in the 36th season, I don't know how it would have come out. Tom Bain had a, a, a player over there that did. An old boy that got out of cop patch come back and play football with them. And just they've been winning games. But just before they played how they found out he was oh about nineteen years old or something, he was in the eligible play, so they disqualified him for playing and so I think we went over there and beat him, I don't know, maybe thirty to nothing or something. We beat it matter of fact it's the only place they ever made a touchdown when we played when we played Tom Bean. Uh, that was my only touchdown I made in my football career. And that was something, get to make a touchdown against Tom Bean. And that was in 35 or 36? Oh, that's, that was in 35. 35, year. Mm -hmm. sure. Last game of the season.
Well, I can't. I think that covers just about everything I had on in there. Um, I wonder. I always wondered how they came up with the Bulldogs, the nickname, the mascot, the Bulldogs. I don't know. I mean, I I might can get Charles Thompson to tell me if he were, knows how they did that. I don't. I think I just don't really know. Now tell us, how, how was it that you got to the field from the school? Well, we uh, suited out at where the old middle school was, and we jogged north of the school building up an alley to the next street up there near the bridge across the highway there and we crossed that highway on this little wooden bridge over to next to the railroad and then went across through the gin lot uh, up to where the present football field was or thereabouts and, and uh, where we done working out and uh, we got up there and we didn't have we didn't Coach didn't bring us nothing, no water or nothing. We, he just brought a football and we worked out. We'd get up there and uh, take eight or ten laps or something around the field, then take a calisthenics and work out. And then we didn't uh, do what we were supposed to. Uh, coach would have us take a bunch of laps around the field. He'd get out there and uh, with the rest of the team, and he'd kind of forget you. you just, and he'd just kind of give out, start walking. He, hey, let's go, go. <laughs> then when we got through working out, we jogged back to the school, and man, we was thirsty. Well, we got to stopping at the gym and drinking her ice water to the gin. Till the guys that run the gin got on us and <laughs> told the coach about it. <laughs> so we had to, we had to stop that. We'd uh, go back across the bridge and, and take her clothes off and hang them up in the wall room. Had a nail in the ball room there, but everybody had a nail piece. And we hung our clothes up in, and then we go in and, and take that cold shower in the restroom, and kind of community thing type of shower. And it's some of those cold days, uh, it didn't take a little too long to get a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we jogged. We done a lot of running when we played football. Then we done a lot of running. We run at the field, and we. Took our laps around the field and we worked out, and then we uh, run back to the schoolhouse. We were in shape. I mean, we you had to be in shape uh, to play both ways, defense and offense, both for 60 minutes. You had to be in pretty good shape. And because you couldn't, you couldn't get out and rest like the boys do now, or the professionals even now. I don't know whether the professionals, uh, maybe I don't think them might be, not being in a better shape than we were in. Because our muscles was loose, our old calves, our old legs were just flopped when we were walking in. Uh, our muscles were, were loose. So we, and, of course, the uh, old Foots Milam being a professional football player at one time, playing with the Giants, I believe, uh, he knew what it was all about. And so he got us in shape. And then there's L.B. Morris was the same way about it. And uh, so we had to be in shape to play football. And yeah. It is. Uh, oh, that's, that's good. That's going to be a, a perfect interview. We'll get a, we'll get a bunch of stuff out of that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, do you have that, that, uh, that belt buckle? Mm hmm So I'm going to get a copy of that and they'll, they'll do some kind of visual. Okay, let me think it's in the closet in here. I'm going to get it. Ankle problems, either. 
Well, let's see. Go ahead and, and hold that belt buckle up. And yeah, this is a, this belt buckle come with a class ring uh, when we graduated, and boys had an option uh, whether they wanted the belt buckle or not. Uh, I decided I wanted it, and two or three of the boys did, and Bill Cloud, uh, he wanted one, and he wore his on his football uniform, and he had his football uniform on. This belt buckle plus our class ring cost fifteen dollars, and it was uh, we thought maybe a little bit high price, but playing that much for your class ring. But I wanted I, I, I've always been kind of crazy about belt buckles, and this suited me fine to get a belt buckle.